For generations, Ventura has thrived on the dedication and determination of extraordinary individuals, cultures, and families that guided and inspired our community. Family members from these pioneering families celebrate their remarkable histories by sharing captivating stories and personal memories. These are Ventura Legacies. Hello, welcome again to another episode of Ventura Legacies. Today is very special. We're talking about the oil industry. And needless to say, that touches all of us. And we have two people with us today that know a lot about the oil industry, Gene Orcutt and Cliff Simonson. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. You're, wel you're welcome. It's a pleasure for us. It's a treat for me. I love stories like this. Because any business, any industry is about the people, yeah. right? And you folks go deep with that. So Jean, start with you. What's your background? Right now I work for the American Cancer Society and um, I've been in, living in Ventura County since I was three years old. So my family um, has had our family ranch for, I'm fifth generation, so in the 1860s um, my great-great-grandfather bought the family ranch. So we're ranchers, um, but my great-grandfather worked for the oil industry. He was the first petroleum geologist for Union Oil Company. So, started right in Santa Paula. We'll hear more about that. Cliff, mm. where'd you get into this? Well, my background, well, my family's background was blue collar oil and gas, and my uh, dad family came from Nebraska. It was, uh, I think it was probably 1914, 1915, and it, they were starving, you know, uh, new, relatively new immigrants from uh, Norway, and there was a big rush in California, so they moved to Whittier, and my dad, by the time he was 18 years old, he was working in the oil fields. Keep in, keep in mind, my dad was born in 1904, so, um, the, um, and it was a big boom here in, in Southern California in the oil industry. Uh, he later moved his family, uh, married, had uh, four boys that grew up on the avenue in Ventura, and he worked at the Ventura Avenue oil field as a foreman and laborer for 47 years. Parallel to that, my uncle worked for Union Oil Company down in the Brea, the Brea field down in Los Angeles. So um, that was, uh, so I was steeped in the oil fields from the time I was born. A family of uh, 10 kids, I was uh, um, the second of a group of six, and all we knew was the oil fields. Wow, on the avenue, on, 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 on the avenue, Inter Avenue. Because this is the deposit here is huge, right? What's, That's right. What's what's this? Well, the, 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 the Ventura Avenue is, has, has, has quite a storied history. It's the, until the discoveries and uh, recent discoveries in the, the Bakken where the horizontal drilling and the fracking and uh, that type of technology has is, is expanded the ability to produce oil, um, the, uh, the, there was 20 billion barrel fields in, in the U.S., including, and, and including, of course, uh, North Slope in Alaska. And the last of the, those 20 uh, famous oil fields to produce a billion barrels was the Ventura Avenue field. And it, I think it's just in the last 10 years it actually produced its billionth barrel. Wow. Billion so barrels. Yeah. Billion barrel. It has the, it's the most prolific field per square foot because it's literally an anticline, which is a geological formation, stood on end. Um, and so the, it's, a, it's not just a single layer, it's multiple layers, but they're stood up. And so you'll see the reason if you drive up Highway 33 towards uh, Ojai, you'll look on your, on your uh, both sides, you'll see there's oil well, oil well, oil well. But they're getting different parts of the strata within the Ventura Avenue oil field because the geology is uh, relatively complex. Now, you worked in the field. I did not work in the Ventura Avenue field, but I worked in just about every other field in Ventura. I started a, a company that managed oil fields. Uh, my dad had, uh, was, I was in uh, school, I was an English literature major at Chico State. My dad, unfortunately, was, was in an automobile accident and, and uh, um, uh, subsequently passed away. And he had started this little retirement business where he, um, this is, he had started in 1969 and he had a shop where we were, we were all welding, we were mechanics and so forth. Uh, throughout high school, I was basically labor you know, this, we we're six kids, and so that's what we're there for, a big farm, farming family from Ojai. And, um, but he was, uh, in 1979, he passed away, and I was going to school. I left school, I came home and took care of, took over this small business that he had, which was 
taking care of other people's oil wells. It's called contract pumping. And it's kind of akin to managing an apartment complex or something for other people. So you're doing the lawns and doing the plumbing and fixing the, fixing the electrical stuff and um, doing the, uh, all the other things that's required on uh, maintenance. And so, um, and he, it was just a continuum of, of his job after he had retired. So, and I was a little kid and I was running around with him like six, seven, eight, nine years old, you know, greasing things and tightening stuff and getting dirty and running around as a, as a child. So I kind of knew the business from, from the very, very bottom up. I didn't know it as well as I thought I did because um, after he passed away and I took over some of these contracts, I kind of made a lot of mistakes. But that's what you do when you first start a business. That's what you do. And Gene, you mentioned that you're with the, with the um, Cancer Society now, but before you ran the, you ran the center in, yes, in, the in the California Paul. Oil Museum. So tell Tampa. me about that. Uh, so for 10 years I ran the museum. Um, it's a wonderful little museum in Santa Paula. It was originally the headquarters for Union Oil Company. And so Union Oil Company started their headquarters there in 1890. They actually started their headquarters, I think, in New Hall, and then they started a little place in Santa Paula, and then they built the building there that's there today in 1890. They actually combined, it was Hardison and Stewart that combined together and started Union Oil Company. And um, they had discovered oil in Santa Paula, uh, up the canyon, up Adams Canyon. Before that, we were talking, Bard started before that. Um, he started really the production that got people coming out from Pennsylvania to California to really look for oil. And then it was Hardison Stewart that came out probably on that word of, of Bard, of coming out to look for oil. And they looked, they had seven dry wells, they, they say, seven dry years actually, until they finally found enough money to pay off their debts. There's actually a really neat letter in the oil museum that says, it's from the San Bank of Santa Paula saying, please pay up your loan <laughs> that's due <laughs> you know, to Hardison and Stewart. And uh, so it's a great history of very hardworking people in the industry. Yeah. That's amazing to think that they have a to the oil industry, to think of it today, oh. you, know, you owe us money. <laughs> it was tough. I mean, there's so many stories. Yeah, the oil industry has historically had its ups and downs, and I think, you know, there, there's a kind of a perception that, that everybody that's in the oil, oil business is, is rich, and they may be today, and next, next week they'll be, they'll be poor again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the, this recent downturn, from last, starting last year, um, put a lot of people, a lot of businesses out, out of, uh, out of business, a lot of companies went bankrupt, and a lot of people lost their jobs. Um, and we, our, our company, which is now d diversified into services and so forth, ended up having to go through a, a pretty significant layoff in our various operations areas. Yeah, because you're really vulnerable. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's the operating leverage for oil. You turn down the, if you, you know, if you have, borrowed any money, which maybe Hardison Stewart had at yes, the time, to go out yeah. and explore for oil and buy the equipment and you know, drill your wells. Um, and there's a, there's a twist of fate and the price of oil drops. And the Lake View Gusher, which is a, a huge blowout successful well, ironically, that was drilled up in, uh, near Maricopa, near Taft, yeah. Yeah. Um, basically almost bankrupted the company because there was so much oil on the market then that it was virtually worthless. And so. Unical and almost went, went bankrupt in 1907, I think it was. Okay. Thank you for that date. Yeah, wow. don't, don't quote me on that. <laughs> wow. So help me out with a little bit of the, the evolution of the fields here. Where did it start and how, how did we get to where we are now? Well, uh, Jeannie was alluding to it. I think the, the California's very first successful well, we were talking about it earlier, um, was the very at first productive well in California was the Ojai number no, six. That barred. Doug. So it took him, you know, up the canyon. It's a great history. Bard going searching for oil, at least in that area, I think is fascinating that he, there wasn't a road. I mean, now you know you go up the 150 and you drive all the way up to Upper Ojai and then you go back down to Ojai. Well, there was no road there. He was climbing and through the brush and hiking through there, trying to find the right spot, you know, depending on where the oil seeps. And there was oil seeps all through there. And he thought, well, there's got to be oil, there's oil seeps, and that was how the first geology was looking for oil seeps. And um, he decided to drill, went in one spot. But our terrain, our, you know, California, because of earthquakes, it's got all these different, 
what would you call yeah. it? It's, it's like messed up. <laughs> the geology is like super the it's very it's complex. Twisted, yeah, wound up and so a lot of times when you drill, just all of his tools just would break apart. You know, you just got all these different angles. So when he finally drilled in Ojai number six, finally got to oil just enough to make it, you know, successful enough. There's a monument on the side of the road as you drive up through Santa Paula, and, and most people would know it, but it's, it, you'll see it's a big rock and the, uh, with a plaque on it put there yeah. many years ago, you know, honoring that by the, there was an organization called Petroleum Production Pioneers that I think is, doesn't no, exist well, anymore. I think they do somewhere, but not in Santa not, Paula. Not, yeah, yeah, not in the venture. And the, yeah, they Paula. put this plaque up and they honored this, this well that was drilled as the first productive well. Yeah. So that was, that you were asking about when the, when things started. And, you know, the original, you know, Drake well drilled in Pennsylvania in 1859 kind of set off this whole replacing whale oil as, uh, you know, the, the primary fuel to, for the country. Oh, okay. And that, that evolved into people realizing that you can, um, and then Standard Oil, um, the old Standard Oil Trust and the Rockefellers, um, um, before Rockefeller became a billionaire and is still, I think, probably not well liked to this day, he, um, he uh, had a, a chemist that developed a technology to take oil and, and make it into kerosene. And the first real product out of oil, actually the first real product for oil was probably tarring the, the, the native, you know, um, Chumash's canoes. Um, and, but for, for the industrialized world, you know, having a, the, a light, so you can, we take it for granted that lights are on, you know, that uh, we can read at night other than by a campfire or fireplace. So having light at night so you can, you know, function and eat as a family other than having whale oil candles or what have you was a big deal. And to have a standardized light from a standardized form of uh, fuel, which uh, kerosene, a lot of kerosene blew up because it was dangerous, became a big business. And so that fed in. So the demand for kerosene, for lighting, for lamps, um, and the demand for oil to supply that kerosene was really the initial growth. It wasn't cars. Cars didn't come into place until the, you know, 40 years later, basically. And of course, they were trying out all different ways, the uses of oil, from which still today we use Vaseline, you know, oil in your, on your bicycle, oil in all these different uses, ink. Uh, I can't think of everything. Every, yeah, everything they is were plastic. Trying, they all were trying to medicine. This table. They were trying to medicines. These fruit, <laughs> well, I did believe they're beautiful. I think they're actually made from. Yes, from there we go. Petroleum. But that was later. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so the uh, yeah. So it's it's ever present. The, the 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 plastic in these bottles. Everything is is oil based. We're the age of hydrocarbon man. The, uh, author named Daniel Jurgen put together kind of one of the most uh, amazing books that people should read called. Um, the prize, and there's actually a documentary on it. It's an amazing doc documentary. It'll give you the history of the oil business. So, but um, in from Ventura's perspective, um, that being the very first, that word, uh, that word got out, and similar to the gold rush of uh, 1849, there was a rush of labor coming into California to, you know, help dig oil wells and put in the pipelines and so on and so Why forth. Why did they assume there was oil here? Well, you know, the word got out. We're talking about uh, Bard. Yeah, with Bard, ah. and that word got out, and um, of course, we've seen the seeps. They could see there was oil, so yeah. that was yeah. The I mean, it was on the surf. Literally, if you drive up Highway 150, you'll see these big oil seeps. So, where there's you know, figurative smoke, there's there's fire, and people knew to start looking for it. But those tar seeps are a little bit of a fool's gold because you can't really take that tar because it's degraded oil and turn it into a useful product. So there, you had to look for other deposits that are deeper and... Uh, well, and then you had to figure out which, where, where to dig for it. So let's say there is a seep coming up and you wanted to you go, know, where's the reservoir? Well, it could be over here, it could be over there. If you don't have any way to figure that out, then there's blind, still blind um, drilling. So, so it takes a geologist like her great-grandfather. <laughs> Who yeah. had, to, had to really learn it on the, you know, on the road, so to speak. Um, one of his early adventures, he worked for, he has, actually was a surveyor, so he was a, went to school for um, civil engineering. Came back to Santa Paula, so he was brought up in Santa Paula, saw all the oil development starting, went away to Stanford Farm School, was in the first graduating class there, came back to Santa Paula, 
and started his own surveying business. And he was actually renting an office upstairs in the Unical uh, building, which is what back then was Union Oil Company. And Union Oil asked him to do some work for him, for them. So he did some work, and he was actually kind of critical, saying, you know, you should really buy up the land that you're, instead of leasing, you should do this. There's a lot of opportunities out there. And so he said, well, they said, come work for us. So he did, and he went out, he was hired in Kalinga, um, and went out there and did a, some work. And he was also hired to, to lay a pipeline from that area over to San Luis Obispo. So as he's going through and, and going with the workers and laying out this pipeline, he's noticing a lot of things and he's taking notes in his notebook. And he's noticing the land and the formations and where everything is and copious notes. Well, his friend Will Stewart um, was the son of the um, founder of Union Oil Company saw that he had this book, this notebook, and he said, let me, let me put it on my dad's desk. You know, I think he'd be impressed. So he did, and next thing you know, um, he was hired to run the geological departments. At that same time, he discovered the oil in Orcutt, and, and that whole situation happened. So, so obviously, so, it's a, it's a, it's a, not knowing anything, trying to figure out what the topography is saying, what's below it, mm -hmm. and how the shift in, in, in what's coming up and right. how, how, the, how, the, how the landscape changes, and he's trying to figure out that map right. for what's below it. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Yeah, and if you think about the Ventura Avenue oil field, it's really interesting to fly over it because it's a kind of a lozenge, and to know that, you know, I, I don't know the exact year that they had first oil production in the Ventura Avenue field, but I know there was a lot of time spent drilling. It's easy to see it once it's like it's like the battle game battleship. Oh, now I can see where it is. But prior to that, they, they had a hard time finding oil. And to this day, there's still drilling wells in that field, so over 100 years later, and still finding you know, oil in that you know, really large area. And flying over the Ventura Avenue field, you'll see it because of the roads. It, it, it makes it stand out in really sharp relief. But that actual field is part of uh, a long continuum of, of oil deposits that go all the way out to Newhall. And if you look at a map of the oil fields that go through Ventura County, um, it starts there and it connects the dots all the way across through South Mountain through Santa Paula in the south part of Santa Paula. And of course, kind of splays out and spreads up through through Ojai. And then in the main goes through Ventura Avenue and then heads off up the coast and then offshore. You connect the dots from the offshore platforms geologically, but now on the surface, all the way down the coast and all the way inland, all the way back past Newhall. And I think that's probably a distance of well over 100 miles. So it's a long field. It's not just in Ventura. It's also in Los Angeles and, of course, extends into Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really amazing uh, energy deposit that um, has contributed to Ventura County's economic vibrancy, even starting back in the 1910s and 1920s. Oh, absolutely. So a tremendous amount of value that has been brought to our county. And continues and to, and, and it continues to be a, a, lot a left. big. That's what's interesting. Nobody thinks that, but there is a lot. Yeah, left. There's a, it's still a big part of our economy here in Ventura. It's not an old industry. It's, it's still fresh, new, with new new technology being developed and um, wells being drilled. In, in spite of uh, you know, there's uh, been a turn towards a more environmental friendly processes, or um, at least you know, in some people's uh, concept. Um, California, interesting statistic, California itself uses right about two million barrels of oil a day, um, maybe a little less. Um, and historically, California produced about half of that. So you're, it's using two million to make gasoline and other you know, products, and it produced about a million barrels a day. Now, California's production has de declined to, I think it's roughly about three quarters of a million barrels a day right now. But it still is using two, two plus million barrels a day. Now there's some initiatives coming from Sacramento that'll reduce the, re the the reliance on that oil. But if you think about it, it's not going to go away. So there's a, I think a fundamental misunderstanding that California is pushing away from hydrocarbon use, when in reality what they've done is you know th through urbanization and, and other other um, business issues, um, they've suppressed 
California's indigenous oil production would be no different than suppressing the growth of lemons and having to import them from, in our case, from um, overseas. The other thing it seems to me about this industry is it just permeates families. People have been involved in the oil industry, and you both were, but that seems, I've spent a little bit of time, I've got a couple of events, and people talk about oil, that's, it's like runs in their veins. Mm -hmm. It's really important, so is that, that's the case, am I right? Definitely, um, being at the oil museum, we had many families coming in saying, my great-grandfather worked for the oil industry, my father worked for the oil industry, they wanted to come in, um, you know, explore that, find out what, you know, where they, where they worked. Um, it, was, it was really wonderful hearing their history, um, also, you know, also wanting to know more about their history, learning about what they did. They come in and see the exhibits and say, oh, well, that must be what they did because they were a geologist or they were an engineer. And then another really wonderful thing is young families coming in and, uh, you know, man telling his kids about what he does on the rigs and showing them. We have offshore rigs um, on display. He say, I work on that. I go out. And when we had field trips of, of kids coming in, and I'd always ask, you know, any of, any of your families work on oil rigs or the offshore rigs? Always a hand. And so it wasn't, you know, it's not just something that somebody does out there. It's it's our county. It really is. It is our county. Yeah, I mean, agriculture and oil. Mm -hmm. Those two, mm -hmm. you know, and when you, you're both involved in that, both of you are. Yeah. Yeah. The um, and it, my family history is is it, is kind of interesting to think about because my dad again was uh, transferred up here to the Ventura Avenue oil field, which in fact was interestingly owned by um, Standard Oil. It was actually the Ventura Avenue oil field was was uh, half owned by Shell, and the other half was owned by a company called um, Associated, which was um, uh, part of Standard Oil. Uh, J, um, J. Paul Getty had, uh, and then J. Paul Getty came in and bought it, became Getty Oil, but he made it, it was a, it was a real um, uh, funny story about how he actually outmaneuvered Rockefeller to end up with the, with the half of the Venter Avenue oil field. Is all the oil from all these fields the same type of oil, or, is it, or does it vary? Well, just, for instance, when I was up in the Sespe, it's a, it's a really nice oil. It's, the viscosity was like 23 to 28. Wait, wait, so wait, it's what really... Do you, what do you mean? What's a nice oil? I don't, I don't know from well, oil. I, I can, okay, so <laughs> if, if I may. Yeah, I'll get, so, the, the, so I know all oil, absolutely right. <laughs> we call that California light. Um, I have had the benefit of working in, in a bunch of other basins, and it's been particularly in North Dakota. So if you, you guys, this will help people understand oil. Oil is, they use a thing called API gravity. And I want to get super technical here, but it has to do with how thick it is. But so, everybody knows heavy oil and light oil. Yeah, I've heard at least that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, the, um, and in California, there's some oil producer here that's, we call it nine gravity. And if you think of the gravity scale, so you're talking about API gravity scale, which is basically a measure of thickness or density. The 10 gravity is the same density as water, but it's not the same. A 10 gravity oil would be like a piece of, you know, it wouldn't move. It would just like molasses, right? Okay. And diesel is about 42 API gravity. So when we're talking about the, the range of, uh, and, and the oil goes all the way up into the 80s, which would be 80 gravity and higher when you start dealing with natural gas liquids. So there's a whole spectrum of crude oil just like um, you know, any other product, ranging from super heavy tar that you can literally carry in your hands up to super volatile natural gas liquids. The oil industry supports so many families in Ventura County and um, head of household families. Uh, and it's so important, people don't realize. One thing that um, the California Oil Museum has been working on, I'm still on the board. I haven't left it. Well, I hope not. <laughs> I mean, talking about being in your blood. That's you, right. You can't just That's walk right. away from it. That's right. And I'm watching over it, making sure it's Good. running. And one of the things that we're working on um, with a program called VC Innovates, and um, it's going on right now. You probably have heard of it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be bringing students in, high school students, to teach them um, all about oil and energy. And we're going to do that and also talk about careers. And it's so important to talk about careers. Um, so we're going to bring teaching them about the careers in the industry, bring in people from the industry, people like Cliff, for instance, or um, maybe somebody from ERA, somebody that I talked to yesterday from Seneca, and you know, to have them talk about what they do and how they got into it 
you know, how much money it makes. It's very well um, um, paid. So it's a, it's a really great industry. And, and we're finally getting out and talking about it. I think that's the important thing, is, is talking about what the oil industry does and how good it is for industry. We only hear about the bad things. We need to hear about the good things. No, you're absolutely right. And, yeah. and just I'm well aware of VC Innovates and Career Pathways. In fact, the mm -hmm. program I showed you earlier, we're talking about the kids from El Camino coming through here. Yeah. We're getting a, a, a VCI grant for that. Good. And it's the same thing. It is Career Pathways. Not everybody is going to go to college. And even if they are, but have look at them, other opportunities, other ways to make a living, and in this case, as you're saying, a very good living. Yes. And I think it's important for all of us to, to elevate these positions and people recognize that. So when they come in, there, there's tremendous pride in the work they do. There is mm -hmm. now, but I think we can do even more of that. So yeah, right. I think that's terrific that you're it doing is. that. I'm a big believer in, in that because we all take different paths. You know, mm -hmm. we all find different ways. And, and you talk about, you light up when you talk about the jobs you have. I mean, it's impressive. And that's, and that's a big part of you, and you get excited about that. And whenever anybody can, anyone can get excited about their work, it, you pass it on to, to somebody else. You use the phrase, you know, pay it forward. And that's exactly right. So I think that's really good. The, I think that what the oil industry is, is unique about it is you're creating value. When, you, you, when you're drilling a well and, and developing a natural gas or a, you know, an oil well, there's something that's been created that didn't exist before. It's a physical commodity that actually helps people every day, and it improves their lives, and their, the, you know, the uh, it improves how you, um, your, your quality of your food, and it improves um, your ability to uh, heat your home, and and adds to the energy mix of our country. And I, uh, it's like food. It's like part of it's part yeah, of our lives. We're dependent on the, this food. We're yeah. depending on for right. our lifestyle. And I don't think the oil, maybe there is a little, uh, you know, the psychology of it is that, that, that there's, there's, I see this story about hooked on oil and you're hooked on, you know, and that's really not the case. It, we, it has made everything possible and I know from the oil industry's perspective is that we're proud to be able to deliver that and continue to deliver that product to the, the consumers in the U.S. and now because we can export throughout the world, um, no different than some of the that's growing a head of lettuce or, or a strawberry. Very cool. Well, thanks for joining us today. This has been a fascinating story on the evolution and development of oil in Ventura. Uh, join us next time for another episode of Ventura Legacies. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.